Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today we're going to start our discussion of oxidative phosphorylation. So we've talked about all these metabolic pathways, the catabolic pathways, the breakdown. We've talked about glycolysis, the breakdown of sugars. We've talked about fatty acid breakdown. We've talked about uh, protein breakdown, amino acid degradation. All of these electrons that we've collected from all of this are now going to go to this thing called the electron transport chain inside the mitochondria. And here is where we're going to use all of these high energy electrons in order to synthesize adenosine triphosphate. That is oxidative phosphorylation. So let's jump on in and see what we can do. This is very, very important and quite beautiful, quite extraordinary. Okay, so, well, I'll just start writing it down here. So oxidative phosphorylation. So oxidative phosphorylation is the reduction of oxygen to water by all those electrons, those high energy electrons captured as NADH and FADH2 along with the concomitant or simultaneous synthesis of ATP from AT, that's P, not D, of ATP from ADP and PI, inorganic phosphate. So that's it. All of these electrons, they have to go somewhere. The ultimate destination of all of these electrons the ultimate reducing agent, all of the electrons end up coming to oxygen. Oxygen gets reduced to water, and we take all of the energy from those electrons, we do something to them, which we'll discuss in just a minute, and we use that energy to form adenosine triphosphate, which is the primary energy currency of the body. In order for the body to function, it needs the ATP, so that's it. That's the only function of oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, so... First thing, the electrons, they flow through, so in oxidative phosphorylation, the electrons flow through a chain of enzymes and or molecules on the inner mitochondrial membrane the inner mitochondrial membrane. So all of these enzymes that are responsible for this oxidative phosphorylation, what we call the electron transport chain, they are enzymes that are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. They're not just floating around freely. Okay, two, the free energy the free energy of this exergonic flow of electrons through the electron transport change, chain, the free energy of the exergonic flow of electrons. So exergonic, as the electrons are flowing through this electron transport chain, it's exergonic. They're giving up their energy. It's a downhill flow for them. They have this energy. They go downhill. Where does all this energy go? Well, here's where it goes. The free energy of the exergonic flow of electrons is used for the endergonic transport transport of hydrogen ions across the membrane, across the inner membrane brain. 
thus creating an electro chemical potential difference from one side of the membrane to the other. And we'll uh, show you a picture of this in just a minute to show you what's happening. Uh, so thus creating an electrochemical potential difference from one side to the other. And finally, as these hydrogen ions, as they fall back down this electro, uh, electrochemical difference, they're this gradient. So as the H plus, as the ions fall back down, this electrochemical gradient, chemical gradient, the free energy is used to synthesize ATP from ADP and PI. That's it. That's all that's going on here. So now let's actually take a look at what is going on pictorially. So um, electrons flow through a chain of enzymes um, on the inner mitochondrial membrane. The free energy of the flow of electrons is used to transport hydrogen ions from the matrix outside of the membrane. It thus creates an electro a chemical potential difference from one side of the other. When these protons fall back down to where they want to be, that extra energy is used to synthesize ATP. So here is what's going on. So this is a cutout of the mitochondrium. So this is the mitochondrial matrix. This is the inner membrane. This is the outer membrane. And this is the intermembrane space right here in between. Now, uh, on two sides of it. So here you have this um, this electron transport chain. It's actually composed of four enzyme complexes. Um, complex 1, complex 3, complex 4. On this side, it just has the 1, 3, and 4. On this side, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The, uh, the enzyme complex 2 is here. It's not necessarily uh, shown over here, but it is over here. So what ends up happening is the following. So you remember the citric acid cycle, um, beta oxidation, all of this breakdown where we're collecting all of these high energy electrons. Well, these electrons end up being given over to complex one. Okay, that's the first step of the electron transport chain. From complex one, they pass on to this molecule called ubiquinone. We'll talk about in that, that in just a minute. Now, uh, as far as complex two is concerned, uh, complex two is one of the enzymes of the citric acid cycle. It is it facilitates the conversion of succinate to fumarate, and those electrons, which are held as FADH2, they're also transferred to this molecule called ubiquinone. And again, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Ubiquinone transfers its electrons to complex 3, and then complex 3 transfers its electrons to something called cytochrome C. Then cytochrome C transfers its electrons to this complex 4, and complex 4 ends up taking the oxygen, reducing it to water, and notice in the process, in complex 1, in complex 3, and in complex 4, along with the transfer of electrons, what happens is hydrogen ions are actually pumped that's complex one, complex three, and complex four are hydrogen ion pumps. They actually take hydrogen ions from the matrix and they pump them out of the matrix into the intermembrane space right in here. So now what you have, you have a buildup of positive charge in the intermembrane space and you have a buildup of negative charge inside the mitochondrial um, matrix. We often call it the negative side, positive side, N side, P side because you're actually moving positive charge out of here and into here. So now you're creating this um, electrical 
potential difference. So now you're creating a separation of charge. Charge doesn't want to be separated. Charge wants to be equalized. So these hydrogen ions want very, very much to get back to here. That's where they want to be. We use the energy to pump them out. Well, we're going to use this energy in a minute when we open up this and let the hydrogen ions flow back in naturally. Well, that's the electro part of the electrochemical potential difference. Well, because we're actually, you remember when we studied osmosis, anytime you have a heavy concentration of one species on one side of a membrane and not a lot of that species on the other side of the membrane, the species is going to want to equalize. So now there's a chemical potential difference. So we call it the electrochemical gradient. That's what it is. So in the process of moving these electrons from one, two, three, four, we're actually complex one, complex three, and complex four are pumping hydrogen ions out of the matrix into the intermembrane space. Now, once they've done that, once the O2 has been reduced to H2O and you have all this hydrogen ion buildup here in the intermembrane space, okay, and a bunch of negative charge here. Now what happens is all of these hydrogen ions will pass down their gradient. Now they naturally want to come here for electrical reasons and for chemical reasons, uh, for concentration difference reasons. As they fall back down through this complex, through this enzyme called ATP synthase, the energy that they released in going downhill, that energy is preserved and used to take ADP and inorganic phosphate to synthesize adenosine triphosphate and pump it out so that the body can use it. That's what's going on here with oxidative phosphorylation. This is the electron transport chain, the electron transport chain, the pumping of hydrogens into the inner mitochondrial, uh, I'm sorry, the, from the matrix to the intermembrane space, and then the passage of these hydrogen ions through this enzyme called ATP synthase to produce adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so now let's go ahead and write some of this down. We want to see it over and over and over again in visual form, in written form. We definitely want to make sure to understand this as well as we can. So.